But you continue to stand as you are able for the call to worship and remain standing through the affirmation of faith. Call to worship. Enjoy we gather this day. In remembrance, we gather this day. We wave palm branches in anticipation. We lay our love before him to cushion his walk. Jesus, you have walked this road with us many times. Guide our steps and keep us close. Inspire our worship with your loving presence. Let your spirit flow through our lives as we seek to help others walk the journey with you. Search our hearts that we may be confident that the Messiah for whom we long is the one you know we need. Jesus Christ, your anointed one, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. I have affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, made of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then he shall come to judge the wicked and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
ourselves to experience the true nature of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes it can put us through a couple different patterns of observation. Sometimes your pattern of observation is just simply looking and seeing what's happening around you. Sometimes your pattern of observation is you joining in and singing the song. And then sometimes your observation is sitting in silence and allowing the spirit to do exactly what it wants to do. The reason I've started and before we get to this place of altar call and prayer, I started by identifying sometime our pattern of observation for this reason. It's for the reason of identifying that regardless of what your pattern of observation is, it matters not what you think it is, but it matters more if you're operating in it. You see, everybody is not a hoop holler, thank you Jesus, a scream to the top of their lungs, hallelujah. Some individuals are a little more solace, a little more serene with their moment of experiencing the Holy Spirit. And then there are some of us that are still in our pattern of figuring out, well, what is the thing I should do based off of what's happening around me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My experience. Hallelujah. And I think it's not strange that the microphone at this time has went out for reasons. Yeah. Because the whole purpose of what I'm identifying is that we don't lose the reason why we come to the temple of God. Amen. And the reason we come to the temple of God is so that we together can praise and worship the Most High God. Amen. See, it matters not what I dealt with yesterday. It matters not what I'm dealing with this morning. It matters not what somebody may have texted me on my way in. What matters is that I have the opportunity come on to come into the saving knowledge of Christ Amen. by being willing to surrender my all Amen. for his all. Amen. As we heard the choir sing, a ride on King Jesus, no man cannot hinder me. But sometimes we forget the simplicity of those songs. In fact, I'm going to take a moment, and there was a song from Kurt Franklin back in the day, and it talked about uh, someone asking a question. So someone asked a question, why do we sing when we lift our hands to Jesus? Come on, y'all. What do we really mean? If you know it, sing it together. Someone, someone may be wondering. When we sing our song. When we sing our song. At times we may be crying. At times we may be crying. And nothing's even wrong. And nothing's even wrong. Let's stop it right there. Why did I go that route? Yeah. Come on now. Because on Palm Sunday, it's about singing praises to the Most High God. Come on now. If you heard the very nature of what was in front of you on the screen, it said that they had no problem screaming, Hosanna, Hosanna. But for whatever reason, when we walk into this temple, we get silent on the God that woke us up this morning. We get silent on the God that kept us when we can't keep ourselves. We get silent on the God that for reasons we still don't understand. He saved me. Listen, you'll have learned me in this time of being in front of you. I am not one that believes in the area of entertaining. I'm not a pastor or preacher that will come to entertain or make you feel good. Because the gospel of God, the gospel of Christ is the only feel good that we have. And listen, I'm not trying to harp and I'm not trying to yell or fuss on this morning, but there are some things we got to identify. And when we identify and we allow ourselves to be quickened by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we allow ourselves to do exactly what the scripture says. Yeah. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Sometimes people may ask a question. Sometimes they may wonder. But what 
you have the ability in doing is being the example of what God wants from us. Listen, this is not a moment where I'm trying again to go into preaching. But before we go into a manner of altar call, we got to understand why we even come to the altar. We need to understand what we have an opportunity to do when we come to the altar. So at this time, if you find yourself, find yourself maybe even being in a weak moment, you find yourself uh, being in a moment where you feel like you're uh, dealing with a lot of stress, you're dealing with a lot of heartache, you're dealing with the confusion of not knowing left or right. I need you to understand something is that sometimes we don't recognize that we have been walking in insanity until we realize that we haven't gotten the outcome that we wanted. At this time, if you don't mind, you can come to the altar. And I know, I know that I've kind of blown up the spot with identifying, but I need you to know that's my call. You see, God is wanting us to recognize what our individual call is. Uh, come on, My individual call is that I am a change agent. And I have no reserve when it comes to setting the tone of why we do what we do. You see, many of us went up there to the Scotlandville Plaza and we did our prayer and communion with our believers in Christ. But even as we did that in tradition, I can't help but look at some of the faces that were there who had no idea why we were doing what we were doing. Listen, I'm going to go into a manner of prayer, but I hope in this prayer you can see the spirit of God that is looking on this morning to awaken us about why we do what we do. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now. And in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus, Lord God, we know you to be the Alpha and Omega. And Lord God, even in the solace of what has taken place on this day, we know that in the same moment that those who lifted up their palms to praise you were some of the same individuals just a week later screaming, crucify him. Lord God, I identify that there are some times when we come into the temple of God and we forget the reason of why we're here. But in forgetting, Lord God, I stand in proxy of my brother and my sister. As far first partaker of realizing some days, Lord God, I'm just not myself, but Lord God, if I can lean on you rather than my own understanding, there it is that you can direct my path. Lord God, even as I work out my own pattern of soul salvation, Lord God, I understand that I have an individualized educational plan with you. And that means I have the moment, I have the opportunity to meet you right where I am. So Lord God, on this moment and at this time, we ask you to see us for the manner of man and woman that we are. Lord God, and allow us to come to you as we are today. And as we lift up our hands and surrender it, Lord God, we ask that the word that is given today, Lord God, falls not on deaf ears. But Lord God, we ask that it falls into a soil that is ready for you to mend. So Lord God, plant the seed in us today. Allow us to be watered by the things of you. And then, Lord God, allow us in the place of adversity to bear our own cross so that in you, Lord God, we can rise with power in our hand. Knowing, Lord God, that we have life and death in the power of our tongue. So we speak now that all is well and that it shall be so. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen. At this time, we are transitioning to our welcome and announcements. Amen. Amen. First of all, we'd like to, if we have any visitors here, we would like to welcome them. We have quite a few announcements. And 
this is from the pastor's desk. Choir rehearsal for Good Friday service will be Tuesday, March the 26th, 6.30 p.m. at Roberts United Methodist Church in Denham Springs. Reverend Deborah Keller is the pastor. Easter, Easter lilies to adorn the sanctuary. Today is the last day to place your order and have your donation listed in the Resurrection Sunday Bulletin. Complete the form and close your check and return it to Cheryl Lodge, Michelle Handy, or the church office. Forms are in the North X. Annual Good Friday service, seven last words of Jesus Christ from the cross. It's at 10 a.m. Friday, March the 29th. 2020, 2024 at Roberts United Methodist Church, 201 Julia Street, Denver Springs, Louisiana, Reverend Deborah Keller Astor. All Timers Educational Conference, April 17th, 2024, from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. at the Crown Plaza, 4728 Constitutional Boulevard, Baton Rouge. There's, you can visit the website at alcbr.org for more information. Our DOTD will be addressing proposed upgrades in the Scotlandville and the Scout Street closure this Tuesday, March the 26th, 2024, at the Kadav meeting. The closure will directly affect people who live and work near Greater King Davis and Crestworth and University Place. Feedback from the community is needed. This meeting will be held on the coming Tuesday, on this coming Tuesday at 8 p 6 p.m. I'm sorry, at the Scott Scotlandville Branch Library. It is free and open to the public. Please come out to help us ensure that DOTD make their reasons for the decision clear to the community that it will be directly affected. If you have any questions, feel free to call the dog at 225-355-3446 or speak with Linda Chappelle. <coughs> Scan the 
given QR code in today's bulletin. Arshin, would you please come forward?
Yeah. 
identify your individual pattern as the man of God just sung that song? Were you one in silence? Were you one mouthing the lyrics as he sung along? Or were you the one looking to see what someone else was doing in response? You see, the reality is that every one of us has a pattern. But many of us slowly identify such patterns. You know, Palm Sunday is always a rough Sunday for me. And it's a rough Sunday because I am what you we call a church pew baby. I grew up on the church pew. And I've witnessed so many of my elders, so many of my peers come ready to put their all together for Easter Sunday. But if we truly understood our own pattern, we would recognize that for some of us, Easter Sunday is just a little too late. So for me, Palm Sunday is always rough because I actually paid attention to the stories as a child. I actually listened to the fact that though we come together with our palms in hand to give praises to the Most High God, many of us would have failed just like others at that time would have joined the crowd and yelled out, crucify him. Yeah. So for me, it's a tough Sunday. It's a tough Sunday because in my spirit, man, I have to look at some of my brethren and my sister. And I got to see the very fruit that they bear. And as I see the fruit that they bear, I have to wonder, can I be nourished? From their fruit. You see, here's the thing, and I'm going to go straight into the word. I share this. I've not come today to give you a word that feels good. I've come today to speak the word of God. And the word of God comes from the very playbook that every one of us have called the Holy Bible. And Hebrews 5 says it like this. And I'm only going to identify the, the chapter because my hope is that you hear the chapter and in your own time, you go back to find the verse based off of what you heard. And it says here in Hebrews 5, I'll be reading out of the Amplified, although he was a son who had never been disobedient to the father, he learned active, special Obedience. I don't know about you, but I know that there's been times in my life where I've not just been disobedient, I've been deliberately disobedient. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm the only one. I'm the only one that know that I have heard as the church would say, what thus saith the Lord. But as soon as I got into my space of comfortability, I no longer wanted to apply what I heard. But in fact, I wanted to find out what can I justify to make me feel better. Yeah. Uh, listen, I, I, you don't have to say amen to me on this morning because I told you I've not come to make you feel good. Amen. I've come to make you feel uncomfortable. Reason being is because I, this week, had to be made uncomfortable. Yeah. Okay. So if I'm uncomfortable, I need you to know. You're going to be uncomfortable too. It goes on and it says, active special obedience through what he suffered. It says he gained active special obedience through what he suffered. Not from what he learned from the temple. Not from what the Sadducees may have said. Not from what the Pharisees was gathered together saying on the corner, but it says through his suffering, he gained a special activation of obedience. I don't know about you, but it wasn't until my father actually...
actually took the belt off of his waist, on, folded man. it up, on, and then waved it in my face to tell me, if you don't get your act together, I'm going to have to do what I don't want to do. Y'all yeah. with me now, right? Yeah. 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 It wasn't until what? The threat of suffering. Yeah. Uh, you got to hear what I'm saying. That I was able to not just hear what he said, but then listen to what he said. Listen, I got three boys, and there's moments in our life that I have to identify, did you hear me, or are you listening to me? Oh, there's a difference. There, there is a difference. You see that we can hear what thus saith the Lord, but then leave the place of where we got the word, and not listen to what we heard. Yes, Come on. Come on. Come on now. Am I the only one? No. Matter of fact, if you like my daddy, uh, you'll take a moment to look at yourself and you'll say, I ain't hear a word, he just said it. <laughs> uh, there were times that I had to recognize by looking in the mirror, hear what I'm saying? Uh, the word says, don't look in the mirror and forget what manner of man or woman you are. Right? Uh, so there's been times where I had to literally look in the mirror and see that I ain't hear nothing my daddy just said. Because if I heard what my daddy said, then my actions would follow up with the corresponding acts, what? Of obedience. Because I heard his word, I received it as truth, and then I lined myself up, what? With the corresponding acts of obedience. But it happens at times for some of us through our suffering. The old saints used to say, uh, 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 it said, a hard head make what? A soft a lie. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why were they able to say such things? Because they recognized that the hardness of you hearing what was being said is now going to make your behind soft because I don't got time to spare a rod. You got to get this thing out. It goes on and it says this in the verse. It says, And having been made perfect, uniquely equipped and prepared as Savior, and retaining his integrity and opposition, he became the source of eternal salvation. I want to highlight something. It says, Retaining his integrity. Many of us got character, but we struggle with integrity. Am I the only one that, had, that has had to identify that I got great character, but I struggle at times when it's time for me to do what I need to do when ain't nobody watching? Yes, sir. My middle baby, Chasen, right now, his name serves him well. <laughs> but my middle baby will look you in your face, tell you exactly what you told him. And then let you know that he did not do what you told him to do. Yeah. <laughs> That's character without integrity. Uh, we want to get to it. My three-year-old can identify what I told him, what I instructed him to do, but then also tell me that he did not follow the instructions. That's character without integrity. Because there are many a times in our spiritual walk that we literally hear what God said, and in the matter of walking that thing out, we act like we ain't heard nothing he just said. And then we have the moment where he visited us, and he says, girl, boy, did you not hear what I said? And we quickly, if you're like me, you go prostate and get ready to pray and throw on your praise and worship music and you get ready to plead your case about what you heard and what you did. Well, Lord, I know I heard this from you. I, I know this is what you instructed, but uh, uh, when, when it came time to do it, there was some rain. And the rain kept me from doing what you asked me to do. Listen, I need you to understand something. Because he is Alpha and Omega, because he is the omnipresent, omnipotent one, that means all-knowing, all-seeing, that means when rain is coming, he has an idea of when it's going to be there. Uh, hear what I'm saying? 
When rain is coming, he has an idea of when it's going to be there. Why? Because he's Alpha and Omega. The issue is, is that if you were here on second Sunday when the wonderful woman of God gave the word and letting us know uh, to find the calm in our way, uh, the problem is, is not what you, uh, it's not just waiting, but it's about what you do while you wait. She instructed us to find the calm in our way. Why? Because if I just wait, then I ain't doing my whole part. You see, and I've used this analogy before, but I, I think the Spirit of the Lord wants me to use it today. But many of us have went to restaurants. In fact, many of us are planning where we're going to eat after this. <laughs> many of us probably sent the text message to the other friend trying to figure out what their plans is after service. The reality is this, is that many of us will go and sit at that table and wait on what? A waiter or a waitress. Amen? And when that waiter or waitress comes to the table, they then have to what? Take out their pen and their pad and write down the order of the table. Amen? Amen. When they leave from that table and they go to the kitchen, there are many people that they got to come in contact with. Got to come in contact with the head chef. Got to come in contact with the other chefs. Got to come in contact with those who are just bus ladies or bus boys. And there's so many variables that go into the order that was given to then take to the kitchen. What am I saying? I'm saying that there are moments in life where God is trying to figure out why are we taking so long to come to his table. You said you want his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. But for whatever reason, you're allowing the distractions of life to keep you from what? Walking to his table and asking him, what would you like today, my father? The blessing of doing exactly what the father says is through it you walk out your own salvation. But when you do what is asked of you, you'll find out that the father who is sitting at the table will literally say, when you've done your part, take the apron off. It's time to eat. What am I saying? That he's not asking you to get things in order for himself. God is asking us to get things in order so that we all have been partaking in the kingdom of God. It says this, and I'll continue in Hebrews. He became the source of eternal salvation to all those who obey him. Concerning to this, we have much to say. It says, it, it is hard to explain since we have become dull or sluggish in the spirit. Go on, go on. Many of us are looking at the rain that is coming into our life right now. And we can't see that that exact rain is brought to us to bring growth. Because we're looking at it with all the distractions that it's bringing. The title, and I didn't get a chance to share it because I went straight in, but the title is, There's Growth in the Rain. The problem is, is where have you positioned yourself in the rain? One of the things that CJ had to do for a homework assignment was draw the picture of rain and, and then write three sentences about that. And I need you to know, uh, God speaks to me even when I'm helping my son with homework. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the scripture says that I should train my son up in the way that he should go. So that when he becomes old, he does not depart from it. So uh, there's moments where mommy may sit down to do homework and daddy may sit down to, to do homework. But there's something both of us need to gain in those moments. And it's something called perspective. You see, as CJ was completing his homework, I recognized something. That depending on your perspective of the rain that is coming will then be the determination of your response to such rain. You see, one of the things CJ said when uh, he drew his picture of rain, he says, uh, Daddy, I I'm writing the rain, uh, but I, I know that the rain makes things grow. 
five years old. I don't know about you, but I got to recognize that that's the spirit of the Lord speaking through my son at five, rather his flesh. Almost like Peter, uh, when Christ says flesh and blood has not revealed that to you alone. But my father, what am I saying? That my son at five years old, who could be upset about the rain, why? Because when it rains, what does a child have to do? Come on, y'all know it. They got to stay inside. But the perspective of my five-year-old was not about having to stay inside. Hallelujah, Jesus. The perspective about my five-year-old concerning rain was that the rain made things grow. How many of us in our adult years are looking at rain in the perspective of it growing things? Or are we looking as it is slowing us down? Come on, y'all. You see, the same rain that comes in our life, uh, and sometimes to bring mud, is the same rain that same rain that brings restoration and refreshing and rejuvenation, right? Yes. But for whatever reason, we only see one perspective. It says here in First Peter two. It says, so put aside every trace of malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander and hateful speech like newborn babies. Right now, my infant, my youngest, Chandler, is still learning how to speak. But understand something. If his father or his mother don't put aside malice, deceit, Hypocrisy, envy, slander, hateful speech. What in fact is my one-year-old going to gain? Oh, you got to hear what I'm saying. Uh, we're wondering why in this season our babies are not walking in the true nature of what God has for them. But many of it is happening because we, with the life and death being in the power of our tongue, are not speaking life in the home. We speak in death. Every time something comes up, you, you got something to say negative. Every time a situation arises, rather than meeting it with the word of God, uh, you're responding with woe is me mentality. Rather than utilizing the fact that the scripture says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, I'm sitting here talking about this, that, and the third, and how I can't do what I wanted to do. A lot of it starts with our speech. The subtitle that I have for today was Trust God's Reigning Power. And it's not the same reign. I hear what I'm saying. It's not uh, the R-A-I-N reign that I'm speaking of. It's the other reign. It's the R-E-I-G-N reign. Well, what am I saying? Uh, many of us are getting so caught up in the reign that we cannot trust the reigning glory of our God. We can't trust the scripture that says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It says what? I fear what? No evil. I can't trust the word that lets me know, but though the weapons may form, they won't prosper. This is the word. But we're wondering why we're not being, as the word says, more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. We're not being that because we are not walking in our own salvation. What is walking in your own salvation? Walking in your own salvation is recognizing though I have come to the saving knowledge of Christ, uh, there's still a relationship that is being built. I can ask my wife to marry me, but if I don't do the things leading up to the wedding that I'm supposed to, what's going to happen to that wedding ceremony? It may get called off. Uh, Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Uh, you see, there are a lot of things in life that we want and desire from God. But there's also a lot of things that we ain't willing to do on behalf of our God. You see, one of the things that I'm teaching my three boys in this season is that uh, you cannot ask me for something when your hands are full of what you already have. You want another juice box, but you're holding on to the juice box from two hours ago. 
You want another snack, but I'm looking on the floor at the open snack right in front of me. Yeah. Why am I utilizing the very nature and the analogies of my sons? Because we got to recognize that even though I may be mature in age, uh, there's a nature of me that's still immature in my spiritual walk. And just as Christ said, he says, uh, let these come unto me. What were these? He was talking about the babies, the children. He was talking about the little ones. Why? Because he understood that the Sadducees and the Pharisees had such a, a, an arrogance about their maturity and age that they were missing the very vulnerability he was asking of them to have. It's all right. I'm, I'm going to clean it up with this one right here. Uh, how many of us came into this temple of God this morning and, and sat right in the pew? You sat down, right? Yeah. Did you look at that seat before you sat down? No. <laughs> you see, I've not come to make you feel good, but to make you uncomfortable. Uh, many of us have more trust in the physical things we see than the spiritual God that we talk about day to day. I came into the temple of God and before I sat in my seat, I didn't question whether the pew would hold me up. I just sat down. Many of us go the same way in our everyday life. But we wonder why we continue to go through spiritual attack after spiritual attack after spiritual attack. I need you to understand something on today that if you are not willing to recognize the pattern of your own life, the cycle of your own life, I know somebody who will, and his name's Lucifer. If you don't want to identify your cycles, he will. If you don't want to observe your patterns, he will. I purposely on this day, I need you to know, I, I think I'm somebody that likes to coordinate pretty well. Uh, one of the things my old heads told me as a young man was, uh, son, don't put pattern on pattern. That's what he told me. <laughs> told you I was a church baby. He told me this. Uh, don't put pattern on pattern. I need, you to, I need you to know something, though. When he told me that I didn't question why I shouldn't put pattern on pattern, I just responded with obedience. Yeah. And I never wore pattern on pattern. If you look at me today, I got four different patterns on. <laughs> I got four different patterns on, and I, I, I like to say I still look good. What am I saying? That there are some things that we pass off to the next generation with no reason why we do what we do, but we're expecting the next generation to just move along. I need you to know something. I put on four different patterns so we recognize that many of us are like the different patterns, but we're one body of Christ. You see, I got on polka dots and I got on a plaid and then I just go up here and I got some other flowers going on. Uh, what am I saying? Uh, you may be a specific pattern, but you're still a pattern. Yeah. Oh, hear what I'm saying? You might be polka dots, but we're going to still identify you as what? A pattern. You might be striped, but we're still, still going to identify you what? As a pattern. The reality of walking out your soul salvation is recognize how God uniquely uh, uh, created you and your pattern. The way of understanding Palm Sunday is recognizing if you cannot identify your pattern, you will be just like the others were, praising him with the glories of Hosanna this week. But next week when things get a little testy, you are on the front row talking about, I knew it wasn't something right about him from the beginning. I knew I, 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 knew I shouldn't even have came over here. Matter of fact, did y'all see him? This is the reality. And then we see that same reality work out in the Bible that we read uh, when Peter then goes and denies him three times. But if you remember before that, uh, Peter was the one that was very prideful, right? He said, no, not me, Peter. Not me, Jesus. Not me. Matter of fact, uh, when they come, I'm going to be ready to pull my knife out. Let them put a hand on you, Jesus. I'm going to die with you. This is Peter, right? 
just in a matter of 12 hours. We see the same boldness from Peter quickly become, come on now, quickly become the very nature of a coward. No, listen, we got to call a spade a spade. We witness our big brother, Peter, become a coward. There's been times in my life where I've been a coward in Christ. And I've not just heard what thus saith the Lord. But because of my own situations, my own circumstance, my own problems, I, I thought that I had the better idea of how it should go. Rather than receiving the word that says my spirit is willing but my flesh is weak, I continue to move on in flesh. But then it says this in Luke 7. It says, And looking toward his disciples, he began speaking. Blessed, spiritually prosperous, happy to be admired are, are you who are poor in spirit. Those devout of spiritual arrogance, those who regard themselves as insignificant for the kingdom of God, is yours. Listen, everything that I have, I have because God has blessed me with it. Amen. I own nothing. I am a steward of everything that he's given me. Right. And the more that I'm faithful with the few things, he then makes me ruler over many things. So I have to steward and recognize I don't own nothing. When I recognize I don't own nothing, I recognize that, that the spiritual arrogance that the enemy tries to pervert in my life can fall off of me. There's a word called pruning. If you've ever seen a tree go through its pruning stage, you'll know what I'm talking about. What happens is that process, uh, the very nature of the thing recognizes uh, all of this dead weight that's off me got to go. Some of us may, may, uh, may be able to identify it in that of purging. There's a purging going on. What is happening? Why am I identifying uh, there being growth in the rain? Why am I identifying that we need to trust God's reigning power? It's because for many of us, the very thing that we've been asking for God is not going to come with the light of day. It's going to come with the darkness of a new day. Yeah. That 12, uh, 12 a.m. midnight that you've been praying and supplicating for is only going to happen through your willingness and vulnerability to suffer with Christ. Yeah. It's in my alike suffering that I have an alike inheritance to the throne of God. So in this season, I'm asking you to trust God's reigning power, meaning that he's already had, as Jeremiah 29, 11 says, a plan and a purpose for your life. One of prosperity. But as you look at this photo, and, and, and listen, I want y'all to know, I did not do that photo. Uh, Big Sis Monica, I thank you for this wonderful photo behind. Because here's the nature that I want to close on. Today, if you look at those sprouts of flower, there's a situation that you have to be certain of when you are looking to plant anything. And that situation in fact, ain't the seed, it ain't the sunlight, and it's not the water. I'm going to say it again. It's not the seed, it's not the sunlight, and it's not the water. But I believe I heard somebody say it in their spirit, which is, it is the soil. Without good soil, it matters not what you are trying to plant. This is why the word of the Lord says, and when you have heard these words, yeah. I'm paraphrasing, harden not your heart. Yeah. Why? Because the spirit of the Lord knows that it's willing, but it also knows that it's flesh. Yeah. It's in a battle about who's going to win. But if we can be like Paul, that recognize after 14 years, that God's grace is truly sufficient for his insufficiencies. I need you to know, and I'm not trying to say that uh, you're going to keep going through heartache and pain. Listen, I'm not saying that. 
I'm not saying that at all. What I am saying is that heartache and pain is inevitable. Yeah. Meaning you're going to have times of joy, but you're going to have times of sorrow. Mm. But the word tells us to do what? Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Right. It tells us to not get weary and well doing. It tells us to speak those things that are not as though they are. The reality as I close is this. Is that rain is inevitable. But what you receive from the rain is your choice. Joshua said it like this. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But I need you to know he started it off by saying this first. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Brothers and sisters, my charge is to choose you this day. A relationship with the Most High and not a religion of faith. What am I saying? Hear what I'm saying, and I'm not here to uh, identify a move away from tradition, but in fact, I'm here to identify a perfection of tradition. Oh, yeah. Which is that religion is not the thing that keeps us when we can't keep ourselves. But it is my personal relationship with the Most High God that is able to keep me from falling. Brothers and sisters, I hope today you recognize that God is calling each and every one of us to a deeper relationship with him. And that there is going to be rain. But your perspective regarding the rain it will be according to your alignment with the Father. Will you be like I was this morning? Able to walk out of the car to go be with my brother and my sister at the Scotland Hill Plaza. And even in the midst of still working out some things within myself, I'm able to declare that I can see clearly now. Come on, the rain is Come on now. Come on. Come on. Come on. But because of the rain of the world, I know the rain of the Most High will never lose its power. In fact, it says the blood reaches to the highest mountain. Y'all know the song. Allow the song to be a supplement to some of the things you've chosen in this season. We can identify when we need to take a new dietary supplement. But we slow for when it's time for us to take a new spiritual supplement. Put down the stuff that ain't working. Pick it up. And pick up <laughs> the God Come on. Amen. who works like never before. Yes, sir. When you do that, I can tell you with the promise, not of me, but with the promise of the Most High, that he truly, truly, truly loves you. And I get emotional when I say it because there's been times where I had to remind myself that he loves me. In the midst of everything and trying to walk out my soul, soul, soul salvation and be a perfectionist, I would come short of the glory of God and I would still have to look in the mirror and say, but he still loves me. Today, my brothers and sisters, I hope that you know that you know that you know that he loves you and nothing can change that. This is the word of God for the people.
and you find yourself in a space where you're wanting to truly surrender your all to him. Listen, I'm not going to ask you to come to the altar today. I'm going to ask you right where you are to allow him into your heart. You see, many of us are looking for change without transformation. So I want you to understand you must be transformed in the renewing of your mind. Many of us can change position, meaning you can come to this altar from that pew, but still walk out of here in the same manner that you came. I want you to take a stand where you are today. And believe that if I pray to God to open the floodgates of heaven, that's exactly what will happen. But I need you to know this last part, that the word of the Lord is a double-edged sword. So if you don't pray for the floodgates of heaven to rain down on you, I can assure you there still will be a rain, but it ain't going to be from the floodgates of heaven. So if you find yourself being in this position today, just lift your hands right now. Lift your hands and as together we are all, regardless of where you are, we are all going to recite the Lord's Prayer together. Because it matters not the maturity of my age, but it matters the maturity of the relationship that I have with God. So all together let us say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Come on, clap your hands right now. may be seated. Did you see anything change on the expression of that child's face? I hope y'all are hearing what I'm saying. Yes, yes, yes. Is that a child ain't concerned that the wind blew and it blew out the candle because the child recognized what it can be what? Lit again. That's right. Even as he looked down in the valley, he said, Shall these old bones live? Allow the glory of God to ignite you in the same manner that the child has reignited this flame on today.
I hope you got to get out of here. We're getting out of here. But did y'all really see how small the flame was? Yeah. Can your faith be as small as a mustard seed? Yeah. Recognizing that all you got to do is get with your brother and your sister. And that flame that she had walking down will grow and grow and grow. Because we have come together as believers. Amen. Amen. May the peace of God be with us. May it rest, rule, and abide in our life. And it's now and forever. Allow us to leave this place, but never from your presence. And knowing, Lord God, that because of you, all is well. And it is so in the mighty name of Jesus. The church says, 